Imagine a 4,000 kilometer long expressway which is completely full, full of cars. Now, 4,000 kilometers is quite a long distance. I mean, if it stretches from northern tip of India all the way to the southern tip, if you're in US, you would go from Boston to Los Angeles. If you're in Europe, it will go from Madrid to Moscow. If you're in Australia, it will go from Sydney to Perth. If in South America, it will go from Santiago, Chile to Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. It's a long distance. But imagine a 4,000 kilometer long expressway, which is filled with cars, all six lanes of it, and not moving anywhere, but running their engines 24 hours a day and 365 days a year. Does that sound wasteful? I mean, it sounds very wasteful to me. I mean, the fact that 4,000 kilometer long expressway with six lanes will have probably two million cars will burn the fossil fuel for for a year and year and year and not do anything good is a really wasteful idea now why did i start my talk with this imagery is because we all understand this problem we all understand the problem that we don't want to have fossil fuel wasted and we don't want the environmental degradation to happen because of the extra carbon footprint these things are going to add so yes, we are aware of this wastage, and therefore we are able to tackle that wastage. But if you stay with me for next 15 minutes, ladies and gentlemen, I can raise the curtain on a wastage which is equally as bad, as much in magnitude as I just explained to you, but has never been talked about in forums like these. And you have not heard this before, and nobody cares for this either which is the scary part, all right? So let me again quickly tell you that you can save $30 billion if we stay on the course for the 15 minute chat. We can not only find out what this wastage is, but we can chart a course to find out how can we rectify this malice and rid the world of this problem as well, all right? It's a very interesting world where it's a big problem of global fabric wastage. Have, has anybody heard this term before? Anyone here, show of hands, you know, I'll give you a steak dinner with beer off on me, no problem. See that, I just, I don't have to spend that money. Nobody knows this, great. You know what, there's a global fabric wastage out there, which basically means that we are wasting a lot of fabric globally, all right? Let me just give you a quick perspective here. The world has seven billion of us, and if you look around, on your left and right, I am pretty sure you're not seeing a naked guy. All right, we all need clothes. It's one of our basic fundamental requirements of life. There's seven billion of us and we need 90 billion garments every year to be manufactured. That's a big number, 90 billion garments manufactured by half a million factories worldwide. Okay, that's a big number and to make these 90 billion garments for the 7 billion people in this half a million factories worldwide, the total amount of fabric that is required is 100 billion meters of fabric. That's lots and lots of fabric. But that's not the problem. That's just the magnitude of how big our demand for garmentation and you know, uh, clothes is. The problem is we actually end up wasting 10% of it. That's a fact. How do we know this fact? Well, because we are working with the manufacturers around the globe. Threadsol is working for the manufacturers of garments and apparels, car seats, footwears, you know, all these things around the globe. We, we do the planning for all these productions around the globe. We plan 2 million garments every day as I speak of. We have a ton of data about the manufacturing processes and their their impacts on that, and we are absolutely clear about the fact 10% of that fabric gets wasted, all right? That's 10 billion meters of fabric wasted, enough fabric to wrap the world around 250 times. And that's actually the impact of $30 billion of global fabric wastage. That's the problem. And the point is that this problem 
is invisible. You, you haven't heard about it, and I'm pretty sure this is a very, very learned gathering. And that's the funny part of it. Why? Because this is invisible. Three days back, I went to Google, and I searched with the term wastage. I kept on searching first page, second page, and then on the ninth page, I found something which resembled like fabric wastage. You know, if you're on the ninth page of search result, congratulations, you're a psychopath. All right, as simple as this. You, nobody goes there. That's, 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 that's a no-go zone. But, but the point is this, that you know, something as big as this in magnitude has a place in the ninth page for Google search results. We don't care about that. Why we don't care about that? I mean, this, what happens to this fabric? Once this gets wasted, what happens to that? It ends up in landfills. It ends up being burned. So either you're going to add the same amount of greenhouse gases as a 4,000 kilometer long expressway filled with cars every year will produce, or you will put this $30 billion of fabric, it's like a million tons of fabric, in your landfills. Now this fabric is dyed, chemically treated, printed, you know, stone washed, acid washed. This, these chemicals are not going to sit there idle. They're going to seep into the water table. They're going to contaminate the soil. And that's going to cost you $30 billion worldwide. That's the problem which I said, and it's invisible. And here is again a quick cue here. What kind of wastages do we care for? We care for food wastage. Definitely, I mean, if you look at the Google searches, I mean, you know, they tell you what the world cares for generally. The food wastage covers a huge amount of, you know, part for that. The global food problem is real. We have seven billion people and tonight, one billion of us will not eat. They're not following a specific dietary regime. They just cannot put food on the table. It's a world hunger problem. And believe it or not, to solve that world hunger problem, you need exactly the same number. $30 billion. So whilst we are wasting the same amount of fabric every year and we don't even know about it, forget about caring. You'll care about something when you know about that. All right? Now, if you do not know about that, this fabric waste is going to keep happening while we do not worry about that too much. And here's the point. What's the reason for this? And someone very special to me told me that every problem has a name a surname and an address, okay? Simple as this. What is the reason for this global malice that engulfs us all around? And the reason for that is nothing but our own consumption patterns. You want clothes and you want clothes cheap. I want clothes and I want them cheap. I don't want to pay a lot of money for doing this. And if I'm not paying a lot of money for doing this, then what happens? Then we go and tell our brands from where we buy our clothes that, guys, we want it cheap. And that's your problem. That's the reason why this, the, this mad rush for cheap gets you into the second phase of our problem, which is when the brands understand that they have to cater to the consumers at a cheaper price, always, 24 by 7, 365 days a year, n number of years, then they are faced with only one way to do it. They go back and push the manufacturers who produce the garments hard. The half million manufacturers around the world are pushed by the brands who are pushed by us. We all want this thing cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. And therefore, the only impetus for this business right now, which is a $1 trillion business, ladies and gentlemen, the garment industry is a $1 trillion business worldwide. It works on only one principle, and that is we need to produce these things fast, 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 cheap, cheap, cheap. That's it. That's the whole crux of this whole, you know, this whole problem. And what happens is because the manufacturers do not have any margin to speak of. Today, the world's best manufacturers are producing somewhere between 10 to 12 percent profit margin, even less than that. I have been to 30 countries in the last three years. I've seen over 300 manufacturing facilities from South America to North America, Europe, North Africa, you know, the entire Southeastern Asian bloc. The story is similar. Every manufacturer is pushed hard and their profits are almost down to zero. 
5% or 10% is what they have as profit margins. And when you have so little money in your hand, you cannot really invest into upgrading your technologies, cannot try to make this world a better place. You are more worried about sustaining that thing rather than trying to do something outlandishly good for the world. And that's the reason that this $30 billion is being wasted. And that's the reason why we have this landfill contaminations. We have this water table contaminations and this huge monetary content, you know, wastage. So let me quickly put a whole summary around this. The problem is that we want cheap clothing. We don't want to pay a dime extra for whatever we are wearing right now. And because we want it cheap, our brands are in incentivized to produce it cheap. And because they're incentivized to produce it cheap, they take it back to the manufacturers and say, hey guys, make it cheap. And because it's like this, and because nobody in the value chain wants to pay up for this, basically it's us who wants to pay for up for this, the guys who are the manufacturing end cannot actually add more technology because they have run out of money. They cannot invest into it. It's as simple as this. Now the question is, we need to change. This cannot happen. Because if this continues to happen, then very soon either you would run out of manufacturers because nobody wants to make garments anymore. Businesses are closing extremely fast. You know, there are sob stories all around the globe, which, you know, which we have seen, it's all right. It continues to move from one country to another. From US, it moved to Europe, from Europe to Bangladesh, China. Now it's going to Ethiopia, North Africa. Pretty much very soon, we're gonna run out of the planet. We can't go to Antarctica. We can't go to Mars to make our garments, that's for sure. So we need to change. What can we do to make this change? What could be the thing that we can do here to make this thing? And here's the answer. You know, there are, there are some very interesting damning reports I have seen in these brands offices. And these reports say that if this item of clothing is one cent more expensive, you will not buy it. Now, let me rephrase this. You know, look around you and see what you're wearing. Would you buy the same fabric, same clothes, same garments, if I were to tell you that this was one cent more expensive? In Indian rupees, it's six rupees, right? Would you buy that? Or would you just walk away saying, no, I cannot buy this. It's too expensive because it's just six rupees more expensive than me. Let me rephrase this question for you. Would you buy this same garment for one cent more if I could tell you that this one cent will guarantee you that this will go down to the manufacturers and they will be able to upgrade their technologies and we can save this mindful waste, mindless wastage of this huge amount of money and fabric and whatever carbon footprints. Would you care to add one cent to your price point, ladies and gentlemen, to ensure that we have a better planet to live in, that our kids and grandkids have a nicer environment to live in. Our groundwaters are not contaminated. There is $30 billion of prize money to be won if we allow ourselves this one extra cent per garment. That's the solution. The solution cannot be found inside the brand houses, inside the manufacturing houses. This is a problem which is created by us, we, all of us, you included. All right. Yes, you want your, your garments cheap. Absolutely. So do I. We got to clean up our own mess. And to clean up this own mess, the only way I can see this can happen is through a campaign, which is my one cent. So I am not going to talk about what we do in our organization and stuff. I'm more worried about the fact that can we do something to stop this thing? And the answer is yes, we can actually go to our brands and tell them, that, hey, let's say I love Adidas or Nike. Hey, Nike, I pledge my one cent for every garment, which would mean that if you are listening to me, I am saying that please add one cent to the garment price, send it all the way down to the manufacturer, ensure that they can upgrade their technologies so that they can save this planet from this extremely, extremely ridiculous wastage. So that's, that's the solution. We got to do some. So I implore you, ladies and gentlemen, if you care for this environment, if you think this planet can be made better, 
this is your chance. This is your chance. Pull out your phones, pull out your laptops, whatever you use, and tweet to your brands. Tell your brands, tell your Zara's, your Adidas, your Nike, your JCPenney, your Victoria's Secrets, tell them that you, are, you care for this planet, you care for this you know, sustenance of this planet. And that's where we all can save this planet $30 billion of this extremely mindless wastage which is going around around us. Now a quick summary here. What has happened over the period of last 30, 40 years of garment manufacturing is this. That we have produced 90 billion dollars of 90 billion garments every year, which is made out of half a million factories globally. And they end up wasting 10 billion meters of fabric, enough to wrap the world around 250 times. This, this extra fabric that gets wasted gets into your landfills, get into your water tables, contaminates everything. We can solve this with our own passion with our individual responsibility. I know it's a lot to ask, but I know this is the only way that we can solve this problem, ladies and gentlemen. And the price tag for this is $30 billion. Now I've come to the end of my, my talk. And I, I want to end this with what Carl Sagan said. And it's an amazing uh, you know, monologue he had in which he said that there are many worlds that have never arisen. And there are many worlds that have been charred and ruined by cosmic catastrophes. We are fortunate. We are alive. The welfare of our civilization is in our hands. If we do not speak for ourselves, who will? If we are not committed to our own survival, who will be? Thank you very much.